had fallen asleep while I was driving. And suddenly, I just woke up. And when I woke up, I was like, this is the car in front of me, this is me. I was heading directly to the car. Wow. And I just swerved right at the last second. I didn't call out to Jesus this time. Jesus was like, hey, Jared, <laughs> wake up. <laughs> you didn't have time, right? No. No. <laughs> I didn't sleeping. know I was about to you were, like, you were actually sleeping. I didn't know to call out to Jesus because I was asleep. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Hi, I'm Connie Witter from Because of Jesus Ministries, and I'm here with my wonderful son, Yep, Jared Witter. Yeah. I'm sure if you've listened to many of my teachings, you've heard his name plenty yeah. of times. I've been mentioned before. Yeah, lots of stories about my wonderful Jared. Jared, you're a wonderful son. Thank you. I'm very proud of you. Oh, good. You've grown into a beautiful, wonderful father and husband and son and brother. Yep. You're just a good man. Thank you. Bronson. It's good to hear. Yes. Well, anyways, we're going to talk today. I'm, I brought you on here to talk about God's protection, divine protection. And one of the things that I've been doing with these podcasts is just mentioning something out of this, this new Bible study that I'm writing called The Greatest Love Story Ever Told. And it's about Jesus and our relationship with him and how he is the bridegroom and we are his bride, even men. And yeah. women are both the bride of Christ. When did you start writing it? Oh my goodness. I actually started teaching this 10 years ago Yeah. and then started writing things down. But it's just been this year that I've been finally like, you know what? It's time. I'm going to get this thing done. So I'm excited about it. And so these podcasts were just kind of like pull out, you know, truth out of it and just talk about it. And one of the things that is talked about in the Song of Songs is how Jesus protects us as his bride, just like a husband, you, know, mm -hmm. you have a wife and you would do everything in your power to protect her from harm, wouldn't you? Yep. You'd lay your life down for your wife, would. wouldn't you? Absolutely. And that's what Jesus did for us. He laid his life down for us and he promises to protect us. And I just wanted to share one of the scriptures out of Song of Songs that talks about his protection before we get started, okay? Cool. All right, Song of Songs 3, 7 through 8 says, look, it's the king's marriage carriage. The love seat surrounded by 60 champions, the mightiest of Israel's host, are like pillars of protection. They are angelic warriors standing ready with swords to defend the king and his bride from every terror of the night. That's great. It's not great. Very good. It's like Jesus, we're like in a marriage carriage with Jesus, and angels are surrounding us and protecting us from all harm, just like Psalms 91. Yeah. Right? It's good. Yeah, because. When you all were young, you and Justin and Kristen and Victoria, I homeschooled you guys. And we had Bible class. Yeah. And one of the Bible classes that we did was on Psalms 91. I remember. And I, yeah, and I had you all remember it. And Jared, I remember, this is my perception of you. Okay. Is that you just believed it. You just believed when you learned about Psalms 91 and that God gives his angels charge over you and that he would protect you wherever you go in my heart i felt like you were one of my four children that just really said that's true about me i did i mean i kind of felt i believed it so much i kind of felt invincible in some moments when i shouldn't have but even though i did <laughs> i still got out of the situation because nothing nothing out of my own effort got me out of it just the fact that like you told me that and then i accepted it and and believed it gave me confidence that i would be fine in whatever i love that yeah i love that that just brought me so much joy every time i saw that on you 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 really thought you were invincible and yeah. even though you made some really poor choices and got yourself into some messes like you just said mm -hmm. jesus rescued you anyway right yes right. yeah absolutely yeah so i want to just read psalms 91 and then i want you to share you know, sometimes in your life where you experienced, you know, I mean, these are like profound moments where you were like, yeah, I've got like four of them. You got some, I've got like you, four stories Four stories I that could have ended badly, but they didn't. did it. Cause wow. my angels were like, little Jared. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> and from being your mom, it just so blesses me that as many times as I've prayed over all my children, and all of my grandchildren, that God would protect you and put his angels in charge of you in all your ways, even if you make a bad decision, yeah. that he's there. And then hearing your stories 
says to me, Jesus heard me. Jesus yep. is protecting you all, and he's faithful. So I'm going to read this, and then I want you to share, okay? Yeah, So sure. this is Psalms 91, 1 through 4, and verses 9 through 11. It says, Those who live in the shelter of the Most High will find rest in the shadow of the Almighty. This I declare about the Lord. He alone is my refuge, my place of safety. He is my God, and I trust him. For he will rescue you from every trap yep. and protect you from deadly disease. He will cover you with his feathers. He will shelter you with his wings. His faithful promises are your armor and protection. Verse 9, if you make the Lord your refuge, if you make the Most High your shelter, no evil will conquer you. No plague will come near your home, for he will order his angels to protect you wherever you go. And that, that is the thing. It's like when you declare, you know, me and Sherry were talking in a previous podcast about acknowledging what God has promised. And all that we have to really do and the promises that Jesus has given us is believe it right. and receive it and lombano it like you did. Mm -hmm. All your life, it's like you've lombano it. I'm the protected one. Right. I'm the one that's going to be safe. And it's not just, you know, you believing it. It's also maybe you're a person that doubts it. Mm -hmm. But you've got people in your life that doesn't. That's true. That works too. That's, I mean, I, I mean the, the, the angels are there to... God's there to, to help you. He'll take a bad situation that wasn't designed for you necessarily and turn it into something great. That's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. So, Jerry, just share with us one of your stories that you, when you experience God's protection, you know, I know you, my son, you have had moments where you're like, God is real. That yeah. just happened. Jesus was with me. So share one of those times. Well, the first one is actually... It, it involves Kristen. I don't know if you actually remember this story, but this oh, is one I that, that, I love that, sticks, this story. that sticks in my brain. Uh, or it's like permanently in, imprinted in my in my memories. But I was in the backyard of a, a my buddy's house, and we were taking a ball and just like hitting it. And he had like a lot of like a big open field in the back, and uh, so we were just doing that. Kristen comes out. First of all, how old were you? And how we were like you? twelve. I was like twelve. Kristen was like seven, maybe. Okay. okay. And I was hitting this ball. And uh, Kristen walks up and said, Kristen, watch out. I'm, I'm hitting. I don't want to hit you. And I had this big, you know, normal sized metal bat. Metal bat. And I'm just hitting this ball. And uh, Kristen and walks and stands right next to me. And I didn't, I didn't notice her. So I throw this ball up. I hit it. And my bat is like r about to hit her in the head. My gosh. And I hit it and I go, and the bat just like stops. Like I, go, I see her at the last second and I, and I just stop the bat. That's amazing. And, and, uh, wow. It kind of felt like, what the, how, how did I, how did <laughs> and also, Kristen, what are you doing? I just told you, right. don't get so close. I almost hurt you. And so she was fine. She walked away. And I was so just like dumbfounded by the fact that I just like stopped it on a dime. I tried to do it again. And I couldn't do it. I could not stop it like I stopped it just then. I was like, what the? What the heck? All right, thanks, angels. I mean, I, I can't do it now. And there's nothing there. So, oh my so like, it could have been really bad. Like, it, I mean, it's a bat. I'm swinging it full force. My it would have hit Chris in the head, and she oh definitely gosh. would have been knocked out. Could Probably really could have been really bad. bad. Yeah. Yes. Well, wow. As your mom, when you told me that story again, yeah. I was like, Jesus, thank you. Two things could have happened there. Yeah. First of all, she could have gotten seriously hurt yeah. being hit in the head full force with a metal bat. Right. It, I mean, it was like this. Like, oh my like gosh. My, my arms, the bat, my head is Kristen's head. The bat goes <laughs> just, like, just like that. <laughs> that is amazing. And I couldn't do it Secondly, again. Secondly, if you would have hit her, you would have been devastated. Yeah, yeah that would have felt Your so bad. Your heart would have just been devastated by that. Jesus protected both of those things. It could have it, been a lot different of a memory than what oh it is. Oh my gosh. And in that moment, you're like, wow, there wow. are angels here. I mean, yeah, and I figured out, like I said, I, I was trying to just, oh man, I can't do it. It just, the bat would just fling back. Well, thank you, Jesus. I just have to say that right now. Thank you, Jesus, <laughs> for protecting my son and my daughter in yeah, that moment. Yeah, yeah. He is faithful. He's given his angels charge over us yeah. to protect us in all our ways. I've definitely li lived it, lived yes. through that. So tell us another one that you okay. have. Another one, I was uh, maybe 17 and I was on the highway here in Oklahoma, 169. And I was driving, going to work or going back work, doesn't matter. 
and uh, I decided to change lanes. I'm like, it's like 5 p.m., bunches of car, bunch of cars everywhere. I'm changing lanes. I look back, there's nothing there, and I start changing. And I said, no, I'm gonna check one more time. And the second time I checked, there's this car going 90 miles an hour wow. that just went from without of my without it wasn't in my view. All of a sudden, in my view, and about to hit me. So I just swerved back over. And when I did that, I'm in like a 1996 Ford Taurus, and the, I swerved so strong, I like lost control. And there's cars mm. everywhere around me, and I'm just like, oh my god. <laughs> Like this, I mean, this could, this might be it. <laughs> <laughs> just going back and forth. I can't get the tires to like grip. And finally I was just like, all right, Jesus, help me. And I just kind of just, just. Wow. Centered out. My car was no longer, no longer out of control. The car that I almost hit drove past me, gave me the bird real quick. And I just, you know, <laughs> he signed him. I was like, I mean, that was kind of your fault, but Oh my peace. goodness, wow, Jared. <laughs> and again, at the last second, I was just like, all right, God, you got to help me here. I, this is going to be bad. I it, love it. So you called out to Jesus. I did, yeah. You called out to Jesus and he showed up. I literally just said, help me, Jesus. And the car is like, beep. Wow. You know, I have, a, I have a story like that, too. I was heading home to Illinois, you know, how we go to see Grandma all the time in Illinois from Oklahoma. And it was pouring down rain. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was just really bad. How long ago is this? You know, this is probably probably 10 years ago. Okay. And I'm driving down the road, and I'm very cautious because I can barely see, and the rain is coming down really hard, and this truck comes zooming past me. And I'm thinking to myself, that's not very smart. Mm -hmm. But as the truck passes me, he goes over into my lane and then just starts spinning out right in front of me. Oh, wow. Yeah, just spinning. And I am coming up fast on this spinning car. And all I could do was, Jesus, help me, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. <laughs> and I'm just telling you, right as I got up right on that car, Jared, that car just whoosh, went right out from in front of me into the ditch. Wow. And I was just like, Jesus, protect those people and thank you that I didn't smash into that car. But had I smashed into that car, that would have been a terrible accident. Was anybody accident. with you? You know, I can't even remember. Mm. I, it seems like some of my kids should have been with me, but I don't remember that part. I just remember, I just remember, oh my goodness, I am going to crash into this car and calling out to Jesus to protect me and to help me. And he showed up. His awesome. angels were given charge. <laughs> yeah, that's great. So yeah, that's, those are pretty interesting moments when those, I mean, those kind of moments like you just shared, what I just shared, they like imprint on our minds. Mm -hmm. And so we remember, it's like, wow, Jesus, you were there for me. And again, his faithfulness, his yeah. faithfulness to be there when we need him. It's interesting how the brain works. Like, you know, certain moments in your life are like permanently just engraved, engraved in your brain. Yeah. Whether it's good, negative, the brain remembers certain moments in your life permanently. Right. Like something dumb that I've said in the past. I'll be in the shower <laughs> and my brain will just remind me. And I'll be like, God, I really wish I had said that. <laughs> been greater if I had never said that thing. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> it is interesting what things stick in our brains. I remember one time your your dad went over to China, you know? Yeah. And, of course, I always pray over him every time he goes to China. Lord, protect him, bring him home safely, put your angels in charge of him. I thank you, Jesus, that you're going to take care of him. Well, one time he came back and he told me, he said, I was driving in a car. They had a driver. Oh, I remember the story. Yeah, and it was late at night, and Dad and his friend was in the back seat, and they had fallen. Uh, they had fallen asleep, and the driver was driving, and Dad said, "I woke up just in time to see the driver was asleep." Oh no! <laughs> he was like this in the car, and, and Dad goes, "You know, I don't know." Yelled at him like, and he woke up you know, just at that moment. But when he told me that story, I thought, wow, Lord, you had him wake up at just the right moment. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the driver was asleep driving yeah. the car. And again, I was just like, wow, Father, you are faithful. You are yeah. faithful. I have a, yeah, a moment like that too, that whenever I was DJing, uh, there was a lot of late nights. So like you'd get, you'd go to the wedding, you'd work until two and, it, and some of the weddings be in Dallas. So I was in Dallas in this instance. And so you'd be driving home from 2 a.m. until six, cause this is about a four hour drive. 
and I was super tired this day. I got out of the, uh, got, got done with the wedding, was in the car, and like 20 minutes in, literally, I had fallen asleep while I was driving. And wow. suddenly, I just woke up. And when I woke up, I was like, this is the car in front of me, this is me. I was heading directly to the car. Wow. And I just swerved right at the last second. I didn't call out to Jesus this time. Jesus was like, hey, Jared, <laughs> wake right. up. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have time, right? No. No. I didn't know I was about to. You were actually I didn't sleeping. know to call out to Jesus because I was asleep. <laughs> I love it. I love it. it. Thank you, Jesus, again for protecting my son. You know, this is why wow. it's like so important for us to understand this promise, Jared, because as moms, as dads, and you're now you're a parent, mm -hmm. you know, there are times we can get concerned about our kids. Right. And it's so important to know when that worry or that fear comes that we can say, Jesus, I'm trusting you. Right. You are our refuge. We're gonna, you're going to protect us. You're giving your angels charge over our kids, and you're going to protect them everywhere they go. And then to hear again, these yep. stories are just amazing. I mean, you have so many yeah. of them, really, as we and, talk about it. And a lot of them it. are just me driving badly <laughs> or while asleep. Well, that's one of the fears of a parent. Yep. You know, when your child starts to drive, now you're out of control. You right. know, now you've put your child in control of the driving and you're like, oh my goodness, I can remember your brother when he turned 16 and he was driving. He was gonna be taking our, your two little sisters, Kristen mm -hmm. and Victoria, to school every day. Right. And I can remember that gripped my heart a little bit. I was like, oh my gosh, he's a new driver. He's gonna be taking them to school. And this was 20 minute drive yep. down the highway, you know? But I know for me, I had to just take that fear to Jesus and that concern and just acknowledge, Lord, you are our protector. You've given your angels charge over us. You're going to watch over my babies as they go to school and you're going to bring them home safe. Mm -hmm. And I remember my heart really coming to peace with that and just knowing they're going to be okay, Lord, because you're faithful to do what you say. You will protect them in yeah. all of their ways. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> so anyways, yes. Um, you know, you, you shared the story with me and Sherry, a couple, I think last week. Well, I'm going to save that one. I got you two say, more. Okay, you want to save it for the last one? one. The last okay, one. that's fine. That's um, okay. The very that's last one is a really silly one. I shouldn't have been in, in a bad situation, but I did something silly. And so I got a silly situation or a dangerous situation based off what I chose to do. I was driving home from work. Um, and it's like 4 or 5 p.m. So just like everything, great conditions, nice day. And I'm driving and I look down on my dashboard and there's like a lighter there. And for some reason, my brain was like, I'm going to pick this up and just start flicking it <laughs> while I'm driving. And so I start and flicking. And not pay attention and not to the road. <laughs> I don't know why that is what I chose to do, but I did. And so I was doing that and all of a sudden my car's tire, like the, the road's here and grass is here. Mm -hmm. So my tire, you know, goes off the road and, and I, I, you know, turn my car back and I lose control again. Another story of me just swerving back and forth <laughs> and my, car, my tire's not gripping. And I'm doing this for like, like maybe it felt like 30 seconds. And finally, I'm just like, okay, Jesus, take the wheel. It's literally what it's like. And so, and so I didn't actually let go, but I was like, take the wheel. And so I just committed. Instead of trying oh. to like avoid the ditches, I was on this time, and I just committed oh. to just swerving all the way around. So my car wow. swerves, is facing the wrong direction on the wrong side of the road, and just perfectly just... <clears throat> and so I'm sitting there, and there's a car behind me just looking at me like this. Just like, just, I'm like, sorry, I back up the car in someone's driveway and I just go on home. Wow. But again, it was just like, all right, Jesus, help me out. Wow. And I was Jared. fine. And there's deep ditches on both sides. So, I wow. mean, like I could have, I could have been in a bad situation, but yes, you I was fine. You could have. And that's the last time I drove bad, I believe. <laughs> That's all my bad driving stories. That's all your bad driving stories? <laughs> I'm a good stories? driver. I just, you know, yes. had moments of bad driving. Yes. That reminds me, I'm going to share this story too. When I was 16 years old. Yeah. And it was sleeting outside. And I was not a very experienced driver when it came to driving on snow and ice. But I had some place I needed to go. And I remember we had a truck and we had a little car. That you were going to a party or something? At school. I had okay. a party at school to go to. And we had a truck and a car. And me and Aunt Christy uh, shared those cars. 
And she had come home from, from uh, work at lunch with the, let's see, she had the, no, I was driving the little car and she was driving the truck. Okay. The truck was one of those little trucks that did not do very good on ice. I mean, it was very light and so mm -hmm. it would slide easily. So my s sister came home with the truck and I came home at the same time and I was driving the car. Well, when I, she left before me and when I went out the door to go back to school, she had taken the car and left me the truck. Mm -hmm. And when I saw the truck out there, I was like, oh no, this is not gonna be good. <laughs> but I have to get back to school. So I sat there and looked at it for a minute and I knew in my heart, I, I just knew, don't get in the car. Really? Don't get in the truck. So you had like a, a moment I of I had like, a moment of- I shouldn't do this. I shouldn't do this. But I'm gonna do it anyways. But I'm gonna do it anyways. Again, a bad decision. Mm -hmm. So I hop in the truck and I'm driving down the road. I didn't get, I didn't get a mile. <laughs> down the road, Jared, and all of a sudden, my truck just starts swerving. I mean, I'm on ice, and I right. am going all over the place, and there is a car coming straight toward me. Mm -hmm. So I'm just like, oh my goodness, my 16-year-old brain was like, I really did make this decision. I was like, I can either red, you know, head on with this car and hurt us both, or I can go off into the ditch. Mm -hmm. And so I mentally thought I'm going into the ditch, so I took the car and I turned it to go into the ditch and when I did the nose of the truck went down in the ditch the back end flipped over and then I went two more times on the side wow. and then ended up going the wrong direction in the ditch but I I tell you when I was in that truck Jared I did not have my seatbelt on Wow. I was like in a bubble I mean I could feel the, car, the truck was being destroyed. It was like mm -hmm. boom, boom, boom. It was hitting really hard on the ground. And I did not touch anything. I mean, my body was completely protected. Wow. I remember when I came to a, a stop, the only thought that was going through my head is this is the second truck <laughs> that I had destroyed oh, of my dad's. dad's. <laughs> and I was 16 years old, so it hadn't been very long. And I thought, oh, he's gonna be so mad at me. And I'm so angry that I did this and I got in this accident and I just destroyed my dad's second truck. That was what I was thinking. I was mm -hmm. laying down actually on the seat and all of a sudden this man opens my door and I sit up off the seat and he asked me, are you okay? I said, yes, <laughs> I'm just so angry. And he talks to me for a minute, are you okay? Did you get hurt? I said, no, I'm fine. He goes, you want me to give you a ride home? He takes me home. I remember when I saw my dad that day, he was like Jesus. My dad was like Jesus. He says to me, he said, girl, I'm just glad you're okay. Don't worry about that truck. Wow. But the axle on that truck, Jared, was crushed. Wow. I mean, it was like hit so hard that it broke the axle. And yet I was completely and totally protected, even though I made that wrong choice to get in that truck. And grandma says, grandma Judy says that day, she was doing a paper route in her car, and she said to Jesus, Jesus, I know my girls are out on this road. I ask you to give your angels charge over them and protect them wherever they go. And, and angels protected me that day. That's I didn't awesome. have a sore muscle. I didn't have a bruise. That, car, that truck was destroyed, mm. and I walked away. Yeah, and you weren't calling out to Jesus. You were just thinking, oh, my dad's going to be so mad right now. <laughs> I wasn't <laughs> calling out to Jesus. I was so angry about it. But my mama was praying, That's just great. like your mama prays for you. Yeah. 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 So wonderful, good, faithful Jesus we have to protect us. Yeah. Yes. And so you're going to share with us one more of your yep. wonderful one protection more story. stories. A uh, story that's permanently, it's got a permanent place in my brain. Uh, I was hanging out with a couple buddies. Uh, we were like, I don't know, 12, 12 and... 16 or 17 or something like that and uh we were being naughty <laughs> basically kind of egging on a couple other older kids and uh it got to the point where they, they started getting really frustrated with us and um me and my my friend we we noticed that the older kids that we were hanging out with were doing it and then finally uh my other buddy was like i want to do it too and so we go out to the end of this road and start i mean we're being silly kids with calling them names and stuff and all that and the guy that we were talking to 
sits up. He was like sitting at the end of the road, sits up and starts waving people over. And so our instinct was just to start running. We all started running and we were in this parking lot of this church. And so we run and as we're running, a car starts just coming straight towards us really fast and uh, stops us from like continuing to run. So we turn around and go to the church door and the church, the church door was locked. We couldn't get in. And so we turn around and the car had pinned us between the car and the locked church doors. And guys started getting up. One guy got up shirtless with his shirt over his hand, kind of looking like a gangster, basically. Like, I'm going to beat you up. I'm going to beat you up or something. Like, and my, my mind was like, he has a gun. We're dead. This is, <laughs> this is, the, this end. is the end. This is the end. This is the end. I only made it 11 years. <laughs> and so we, they start, there's like four of them. They start just like walking towards us. And how and old then, were they, you think? They had to be like close to 20, 18, 20? 19, wow, something like big, that. If okay. not older, they were big. So way bigger way than, bigger than us. year olds or 13 year olds. So we're all watching <laughs> these guys come uh, walk towards us and we have no more words. The words are gone. We are, we are now afraid for our life. We're all just sitting in silence as these guys are walking oh towards goodness. us. And one dude points to us, looks to his left, and then looks back at us and goes, you, you, you don't do that again. And they all get in their car and just drive off. Wow. And we're all in shock so we just stayed in the same spot in silence for like five minutes just looking at each other it's like what what aren't we supposed to be dead right now <laughs> like what happened wow and so like it, that moment is stuck in my brain for so long because i i was i'm so confused as to what happened like i guaranteed was gonna get the crap beaten out of me right and it didn't and the only thing that makes sense to me is like they look to their left and my brain just thinks there must have been an angel. Wow. An angel there or something that scared them or something. I don't know. But they looked to their left, drove away in a situation where we should have been beaten up. Beaten up. Wow. There you go. Jesus was there for you again. And even that, in your not being good. Yeah. Even in our, in our terribleness. Like that church, <laughs> we, we would go play basketball at that church all the time. So yeah. that church was like never, the door was never locked. So that was, a, a, you know, an interesting situation too. Like the church that we go in and hang out in, in this moment, the doors are locked. Wow. Like our safety was like, okay, let's get to the church. We'll be fine there. Church is locked. We're done. Oh my goodness. So and Jesus showed up. Thank yep. you, Jesus, Jesus again as your mom. Oh my goodness. When you told me that story, I was like, oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you for protecting uh, Jared and Cole and Hunter, yep. which is Sherry Hensley's yes. son. I wasn't sure if I should say names, but it was Cole and Hunter I was with. <laughs> yes, all three of you into mischief. Yeah. But even that's so comforting as a parent to know that even when your children make bad choices, yeah. even when they don't act exactly right, you still have that promise that God's going to protect yeah. them. It's so beautiful. I am curious if they remember it the same way I remember it because yeah, y'all, because, you're gonna have to ask yeah. them someday. I've wondered that myself when you shared that story, but it's one of my favorite that you tell about God's protection, Jesus being your protector. Right. Wow. I mean, and I didn't, I didn't see an angel. I just assumed that that's what they saw. Yeah. And, and got scared. I mean, something had to happen because he was all tough and confident, and then all of a sudden, kind of like shaky and stuttery as he was talking. Yeah. Really? Like they were cursing at us and stuff and, and being like, you guys should have done that. And then looked to their and left and all of a sudden, you guys don't do that again. I just started like, mumbling. Yeah. Huh? Yep. That is crazy. What a, what a great story. Wow. Jesus is good. He's been good and faithful yeah. all these years, yeah. hasn't he? He has. Yeah. I love talking about God's faithfulness with you, Jared, because you know, in this world, you've had a lot of things come against you. People question your faith, question Jesus, mm -hmm. because you're in that age where people have, a, you know, you really believe in Jesus, right. you really believe in God. And when I've asked you about that, you know, what has kept you stable? You said it's your own personal experiences. Yeah, it was life experience. It's the only thing that makes sense to me. Yeah. Based off what I've gone through, is that there's somebody, a higher power, Jesus, yes. God, that is looking out for me. Yes. Yes. And you know, one of the things that we would talk, I would teach you all and share with you living in Oklahoma is we have lots of tornadoes. Yep. 
And I remember many a time telling all four of you kids, we got nothing to worry about. <laughs> oh, yeah. We I got have nothing a, to worry about. I have a recent story about something I, And I'm like going to have you share that because yeah. I know you have been, again, one of my children who have just been really strong right. in your faith that I'm protected. We are protected. No mm -hmm. harm is going to come near us. God has given his angels charge over us. But growing up, I would tell you that every time there was a storm, every time there was a tornado coming, I was like, no. Jesus said he would be our refuge and our protector. He's given his angels charge over us. No tornadoes coming near our house. Mm -hmm. And I believed that. And you saw that in me, didn't you? Yeah. When I taught you those things, what did you think about mom sharing that with you? What did you think about what I believed? I thought it was good. I thought it was uh, great. And I believed, I believed it and accepted it. And like I said, it made me feel invincible in, mo in, in a lot of moments. Again, not because I feel like of anything of my own actions, right. just because I accept that that is what Jesus taught us and I believe it and accept it and I'm going to believe it until the day I die because I've seen it. I've seen it happen. That's so wonderful. Oh um, but uh, yeah, I mean like with the tornado things, yes. recently Tulsa had a really bad storm where there was like, I don't know, 100 mile an hour winds or stronger. I can't remember exactly. And in those moments, my wife, she gets a little nervous. She's like, well, Jared, what do we do? Do we need to like get in a, a tub and, and put a mattress on us? And like if it started getting really bad or something, like yeah, maybe we should do that. But I just felt confident, like my angels, our angels are gonna be, we're gonna be safe, we're gonna be protected. We have nothing to worry about. It don't worry about it. Just go back to sleep. And she's like, I need, I really, I would really like us to keep an eye on it and stuff. So like, okay. So I go out to the living room and I'm just sitting in the living room next to the window and just kind of like watching what's mm -hmm. happening outside. Mm -hmm. And like our, our, we have a little umbrella in our front yard and that's not really, it's not like in the ground. It just has sandbags on it. And it's like opening and shutting, opening and shutting. And I'm just watching it. And eventually I'm just like, okay, I'm going back to sleep. So I go back to sleep. We wake up the next morning to see the aftermath of the storm. And, and this, is, this is the storm where Tulsa lost power for like weeks. Right. Including our house. So did you pray? Did you speak to it? Did you well, I just, I, I told Lauren, like, we're protected. Okay, our so angels, you just declared yeah, what was true. I was like, true. we are protected. We're protected. We are fine. We're a, a thousand fine. may fall to our left, a thousand may fall to our right. But it ain't coming but it ain't to come, us. It ain't coming Thank to Thank you, us. Jesus. So, you were decreeing what Jesus says. Yeah, I love so that. So we wake up the next morning, and we see what the storm had done to our neighborhood. We go outside. There's a tree on top of our neighbor's house with his roof, like, ripped off. Our umbrella that was opening and shutting, perfectly fine. <laughs> Just sitting there, still with the sandbags, not. <laughs> in, 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 oh, that's pretty funny! In, wow. In perfect shape. The only thing that had happened is there's like a little uh, wrap that keeps it shut. Yeah. The storm opened that up, and you know, yeah, it was made, open made, and it, made the the umbrella open and close. I went over to our tree. There was a few sticks on the ground. Went to the neighbor, looked at their neighbor on our right, and they had a, a tree just across their, their front wow. lawn. Wow. Our entire neighborhood, there was like roads blocked off because wow. there was trees and debris just everywhere. And it looked chaotic. Mm -hmm. And then you look back at our house, we had three sticks in the yard and an umbrella <laughs> that was still there. <laughs> and then there's, there's a neighbor that. down the road that has the exact same umbrella that we have. Oh no. <laughs> and it was on the ground. <laughs> In shambles. Oh, man. And our umbrella, perfectly fine. Wow. Wow. Isn't that amazing? And it's yeah. simply, it really is simply just acknowledging his yeah. protection. Acknowledging what is true. Because it's available to everybody, right? right? Yeah, it's not like a skill that I have no. to be protected or anything no. like that. It's nothing I'm doing. Right. I just accept the promise that was given to me. Amen. And that's all I can attribute it to. I is that Like, that, I believe Jared. that that is the case. That I had, that my family has their own group of angels Amen. that protect us from any harm, and sickness, and disease. Makes me so happy as so. your mom. Makes me so happy that you are going to carry that down to the next generation. You're going to teach your children right. the same thing. They're going to believe and receive God's protection, and we're going to continue to experience those times when Jesus shows up, even when we make dumb decisions. Right. You know, the, the only <laughs> moments where I have a little bit of doubt is whenever like you have something happen to you because you're the person that I learned it from. Like whenever you were dealing with your little thing. Really? In my mind, my mind goes, well, that could happen to me because it happened to my mom and I know she believes the same 
that I believe. Oh man, Jared, no. You know, it says in this world we have, in this world we will have trouble, tribulation, right. distress, and fright. There's going to be times things happen to us that we don't understand or whatever. Right. But Jesus is still there, and yep. He delivered me, and He rescued he me did. out of that that situation. But yeah, no, isn't that interesting? Because I feel invincible too. Right. And honest to God, do I really do? I mean, there's been so many times when I've been in dangerous situations, Jared, that you know I haven't shared with you. <clears throat> One time, we were about to run out of gas, okay? I was with two of my friends. We were driving down the road, about to run out of gas, and I seriously had zero miles left on, and no gas station in right. sight. And so I'm like, I got to get off at the next gas station, the next station or next exit, and find out where a gas station is. Well, the place we pulled off was an adult store. Oh, no. Yes, it was an adult <laughs> store, all right? And so my friends are like, honey, you ain't going in there. I said, I sure am. I have to. I have to find out where the gas station is. We don't know where the gas station is, and this is the only place we got. And they're both going, ah. <laughs> But I was just, my heart was like, I'm in this situation. I wouldn't normally go in a place like right. that. Yeah. I wouldn't normally put myself in that kind of position, but I had no really other choice to figure out where a gas station was. And in my heart, Jared, it was just like, can't touch this. Right. Can't touch this. You ain't touching this. I'm protected by God, right? Mm -hmm. But what ended up happening was right as I was pulling up to go into the adult bookstore with this huge, you know, <laughs> anyway, this semi truck pulls up right next to me, rolls down his window, and he's like, can I help you? Is there something? I don't even know why he did that. I'm coming to this store. <laughs> but I said, I'm looking for a gas station. I said, we have zero miles left on my gas tank, and I got to find a gas station. He goes, well, if you'll go back, there's one, one mile down this road right here. Oh, nice. And so I was like, thank you, sir. <laughs> <laughs> and we drove on down right. the road. But again, it was just that feeling. What I was sharing that with, we, with you because that feeling of just protection. Just right. like, you can't hurt me. I have the God, the King of all kings, the Lord of all lords, commanding angels to protect me, and you cannot touch me. Yeah, that's good. It's such a great feeling to live that way right and it's something you have to continually yep. acknowledge because it can go what i mean i'm saying you fear can try to grip you right and you have to acknowledge it again right Lord, that's not that's not true that the what i'm thinking that fearful thought isn't true like i said with you kids there's been times fearful thoughts have come at me i mean some major fearful thoughts i remember one time jared when you were getting ready to go on a missions trip we were going to yeah, Destiny, Destiny Church, Church yeah. and you were going on a missions trip. And I remember, and I was so excited because I knew if you went on a mission trip, so it would be a wonderful, a great experience for you. And I was very excited about it. And then all of a sudden, I got this real uneasy feeling. It was like, Jared is not to go on this trip. Something's not right about this trip. I mean, I just got that feeling. It wasn't like, oh, you know, like a, it wasn't like a scary feeling. It was more like a, an intuition mm -hmm. feeling of don't go that way. Don't do this. But you were so excited about going on that trip. And there were other kids going on that trip. And I was like, okay, I don't want to just tell Jared he can't go because I'm not feeling safe about that. Right. And there's other kids that are going. So I just asked Jesus, I said, Lord, if what I am feeling is right, if there's something about this trip that's gonna end badly, I'm asking you not to only protect my son, but to protect all of those children right. that are going on this trip. And I promise you the next week when you went back to church, I don't know if you remember this. I do. But the youth pastor said, I don't feel good about this trip and we're canceling it. Do you remember that? That's crazy, yeah, I do remember that. Yes. Yeah. And when you came back and told me, I didn't even have to tell you how I was feeling. I just prayed over the situation. Mm -hmm. And he, I know that I know something bad would have happened. There's right. no doubt in my mind. But I also know that I know that Jesus shut that door because I said, Lord, protect everyone. You know, keep everyone safe. Yeah. And he is faithful when we acknowledge him, when we hear that and we say, Jesus, protect. And again, there are times we don't cry out to Jesus, right. but other people are praying for us. and. So Jesus protects us in so many different right. ways. And I'm not like 
uh, and I believe it, but I'm not like going out and be like, all right, I'm gonna jump off this cliff <laughs> and God's gonna catch me. It's, that's, not, that's not like, it's not that extreme. It's like, you know, you're in a situation that you didn't intend to be in, but but there's a way out because God's there to, to help that's you get right. out of it. Oh my gosh, and I'm gonna tell this one more story. And then if you have something to share, then you can too, but we can, we'll end our podcast. But this is one of my vivid memories that I will never forget. When we were on a family trip in Tennessee, and we had our cousin, your, your cousin Jonah with us. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, I remember yeah, this. This is the most amazing story. I mean, he could have died that day. Yeah, I was there when it happened. Did you watch that happen? Yeah, I watched it happen. Oh my gosh, then you tell the story. Okay. <laughs> <You We're... laughs> I'm just gonna tell it second hand, but it was like, oh my gosh, Jesus was there. He protected Jonah. Wow. Yeah, we were okay. we were hiking, uh, what was it, in Tennessee, I think. Mm -hmm. We were hiking in Tennessee, uh, and I don't know how it happened exactly, but we were walking, and there's like a cliff next to us. And all of a sudden, Jonah starts slipping off the cliff, and at the last second, like, grabs a tree and then lands on, like, a sliver of, of land. It's like, here's the, the main where we're all walking, and then here's where he lands, and it's, like, not very thick. And so he miraculously doesn't fall down the cliff and hits on this ledge, ledge that's you say super this tiny small. ledge and i and aaron he's like jonah right and, and you know barely and jonah ends up being fine and i i walk over to where they're at and i look down and literally it's a spike pit of rocks like it would have been terrible he if would he would have fallen died. off into he could have died yeah he, or been seriously guaranteed injured. guaranteed it was like a pit of spikes made out of rocks but he like grabbed the tree and barely landed on this ledge, and Aaron, was, you know, got over there real quick and helped pull him up. It was just a crazy situation that happened in like a split a split second. Right, he fell it over that. Started and because, ended yeah. very fast. Yes, and yet Jesus. Yeah. Miraculously, his angels. I mean, I'll never forget that story. Yeah. Because in my heart, I'm like. This could have been a tragic day. I know we were on a family vacation. We were on a family it could vacation. Have been it a, could have been horrible. Yeah. And for him to somehow land on a ledge that this, what, how that ever happened, mm -hmm. and him able to grab something as he was falling is the most amazing thing. Yeah. Jesus was there. Yeah. He gave his angels charge over Jonah and protected him, even in Absolutely. his <laughs> silliness, <laughs> because yeah. he wasn't obeying. I know that what was yeah, he saying. I, I can't he, remember what he, he was, was doing. Yeah, Aaron was telling him, get away from the side or yeah. something like that, and he wasn't listening, and, and then all of a sudden he finds himself falling over the cliff. Yep. And praise you, Jesus, we have a faithful, faithful Father, faithful, right. faithful Jesus to protect us in all our ways. Praise you, Jesus. Well, Jared, I have loved I loved having you on my podcast today. Awesome. It was good to be on here. I fun. love the stories that you Now share. we have all these memories recorded. We can go back and watch it we whenever do. we want. Oh, yes. That's right. Yep. It's going to be good to listen back to and, and for others to hear it and to know that there is a place you can live in where you know that Jesus is going to protect you, that he's going to give his... He says it right here. I'm yeah. going to read it again. If you make the Lord your refuge, if you make the Most High your shelter... No evil will conquer you, for he will order his angels to protect you in all your ways. Yep. He will order his angels to protect you. If you make him your refuge, if you receive, basically is what we've been saying. Right. If you receive, and you just have it in your heart, that you know that God's going to protect you everywhere you go. Yep. What a beautiful way to live in a dangerous world, Absolutely. right? Absolutely, yeah. Right. Well, thank you for being on, the sh on my podcast Absolutely. today. We'll have to do it again. Sounds good. All right. We invite you to download our free Because of Jesus Ministries app. You can watch our weekly broadcast on demand, watch or listen to Connie's Bible studies, download the notes for our current study, cast Bible study videos to your TV, purchase books from our online bookstore, find information on upcoming conferences and events, connect to our social media, or donate to support the ministry of Because of Jesus. This free app is made available by the partners of Because of Jesus Ministries.